Hi there, in this episode we're going to look at the events that lead up to the creation of the new constitution and how everybody didn't exactly agree with that new document. So we need to start with the Constitutional Convention. In the last episode we talked about Shays' Rebellion where farmers um, rise up against the taxes and against the foreclosure of their farms. Um, when this happens and the federal government is not in a place where it can respond, um, the flag of concern gets risen. And as a result, we're going to have a meeting in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's going to last quite a long time, from May to September. Um, and they're going to look at the Articles of Confederation and see if they can fix it. Um, that was the original goal. But we're going to see that with time, it's going to be scrapped and we're going to start anew. Now, the people who met there, the men who met there, are called framers. They were delegates to this um, convention. Um, people like um, Ben Franklin and James Madison and George Washington, um, those men are all representing their states at this uh, constitutional convention. The convention had basically three goals. Um, they wanted to protect the nation from any foreign or internal aggressors. Basically, think defense. Whether we're defending ourselves from Great Britain still, or if we're defending ourselves from an uprising like Shays' Rebellion. The next one is to unify the nation. Um, what's happening is that we are acting like 13 baby countries under the uh, Articles of Confederation. And the last one is to create a government that's based on the separation of powers, what you should remember is uh, the idea of Montesquieu, um, and those powers should have checks and balances put into place. They're also looking at a concept called federalism, this idea of a strong central government. However, those delegates that meet in Philadelphia do not all agree on how to reach these goals. They basically have three different points of view. You have to remember they're coming from different colonies, different regions in the country, um, and they have different backgrounds. Now, some of them wanted to keep the Articles of Confederation. They just wanted to tweak them. Um, but they were afraid um, of the weaknesses of the Articles. But they didn't want things to get too powerful at the national government. Now, some of the framers supported a, a complete redo. Um, and they wanted to shift power away from the states and make a national government that is more powerful, where you'd have um, a national government and a state government that's sharing the powers. And then lastly, you actually had some of the, the people, some of the delegates at the Constitutional Convention that thought, we're in way over our head and we should just go back and beg and plead with England and help hope and pray that they take us back. What's going to happen, though, is we're going to see lots and lots of debate at the Constitutional Convention. Um, and the biggest debate is over how to create a legislative branch. Of course, the legislative branch is the branch of government that makes laws. Now, the Virginia, the colonists, the, I'm sorry, the state of Virginia offers up its plan. It's written by James Madison, and he's actually known as kind of the father of the Constitution. In his plan for the government, we have three, ban uh, three branches with checks and balances to prevent any abuse of power. He has a bicameral legislative branch, which means two houses. Um, one with members elected by the people for three-year terms, and the other composed of older leaders ex elected by the state legislature for seven-year terms. He also um, uses proportional representation, so he wanted it based on population. Depending on how many people you had, you actually had more representatives in Congress. And of course, this is going to be supported by big states, states that have large populations. Not everybody agreed. Um, and we're going to see the New Jersey plan. Now, New Jersey kind of counters, and they want to keep it similar to the Articles of Confederation. They suggest a unicameral legislation, so only one house. And they want equal representation. One state, one vote. Simple. And of course, this is going to be um, supported by the smaller states with less population, because they will have the same amount of power as a big state. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to have what's called the Great Compromise, or the Connecticut Pro Compromise. It was written by the delegate, of course, from Connecticut. That was Roger Sherman, and he had been a signer of the Declaration of Independence as well. It basically took the Virginia plan and the New Jersey plan and smushed the two together. 
So we have a bicameral Congress, two houses, a Senate and the House of Representatives. In the Senate, we have equal representation, two senators per state. With the House, we have proportional representation. It's based on the population, so one representative per 30,000 people. And of course, this is going to appeal to both the big states and the little states. Now, the second big um, stumbling block for the Constitution is the issue of slavery. The um, Great Compromise solved how we're going to set up Congress, but the House of Representatives is based on population, and we need to decide how that population is going to be calculated. In the South, they wanted all their slaves to count as part of the population. Of course, the North is going to disagree with that. The Three-Fifths Compromise says that three out of every five states in the South counts towards the population. With this compromise, the South gains a lot more power in the House of Representatives. The next big um, compromise is called the Commerce Compromise. And this is going to pit the North versus the South again. Um, the convention wanted to put tariffs, taxes on imports and exports, into place. And the South disagreed. They thought it was going to hurt their economy because they ex exported a lot of raw, uh, raw goods. Um, the North is starting to be more and more industrialized. So they want the protections of the tariffs. As a compromise, tariffs are, were only placed on imports and not on exports. Now, to get the, the actual Constitution ratified or approved by all the different states, it had to be, um, you know, kind of vetted or looked at by the people. And not everybody agreed with this new Constitution. Many people may have thought that it made the federal government far too powerful. Because of that, we're going to see two groups emerge, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. Now, the ones that supported the new Constitution were called Federalists. Um, the ones who were against it were called anti-federalists. Now, the federalists are going to start trying to convince the American public that the Constitution is a good idea and it's something that we need. They write what are called the Federalist Papers. This is a collection of 85 different articles and essays that were published basically in newspapers, but with time it actually becomes a book. Um, it explains all the ins and outs of the Constitution. They're kind of trying to explain um, why we did things this way, why we put this part in the Constitution. Now, there are three main writers of the Federalist Papers, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, who again was the father of the Constitution, and John Jay, who actually goes on to be our, our first um, Supreme Court uh, justice. And all of them are promoting the Constitution and suggesting we ratify it. Now, on the flip side, the Anti-Federalists are weary of this new constitution. They're really convinced that it gives too much power to the national government and takes that power from the state government. Now their big problem is with individual rights. If you look at the constitution, there's no mention of individual white rights whatsoever at all. Nothing about freedom of speech, nothing about freedom of religion, the right to bear arms, all those things that you think of when you think of America are not literally in the constitution. And the anti-federalists are like, whoa, 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 what? So um, they're going to be the ones who call for the Bill of Rights. The last thing that the anti-federalists are really worried about is what's called the Necessary and Proper Clause, or the Elastic Clause. Basically, um, it's a loophole in the Constitution where it says, well, if we didn't write it down anywhere, and it's something that's necessary, it's needed, and it's proper, it's okay, um, then the government should be able to do it. And it's a pretty big loophole, and the Anti-Federalists were very concerned about that. Now, our last compromise to get the Constitution ratified is really that, that Bill of Rights. In order to win over support for ratification, the idea of a Bill of Rights was introduced. Of course, that's the first ten amendments to the Constitution, and it's what ensures most of our individual rights. Okay, that's it for this time.